G'day guys, how are we all? You'll have to excuse me, I don't have a tripod today and my arms aren't very long. Hey boo. How is everybody? Oop. Where you going boo boo? Oh hang on. We'll flip her over. There we go. How is Boo going today? Boo is doing well. Here we go. So hello, Boo. Hang on, everything's upside down now. Whoop. <laughs> I was just tidying up in, in Boo's enclosure and doing a little bit of watering. Uh, so Boo is getting me, me all muddy. Thanks, Boo Boo. But um, yeah, so basically, uh, I don't know how many of you guys follow us on Facebook, um, but obviously a lot of photos of Boo go up on Facebook, don't they, Boo? And uh, she's by far the most popular of all the animals that we have here at Wicked Wildlife. Uh, and of course, you know, all the animals that we have, we love, they're all parts of the family, but Boo is, uh, is closer to being one of our children than one of our educational ambassadors. Uh, and because of that, and the fact that so many people like her, we thought it'd be a bit of fun to give her her own Facebook page. Because we have thousands and thousands of photos of just us hanging out with Boo, and we thought, rather than them all sit on my phone, um, we'll share them all. So, Facebook, our Facebook page is just Wicked Wildlife, and there's now a new Facebook page, which is Boo the Wombat. Yay for Boo, the Wicked Wildlife ambassador, spot on. So yeah, there's two Facebook pages, Wicked Wildlife, which is just facebook.com forward slash Wicked Wildlife. Uh, and yeah, same thing, Boo the Wombat, which you should be able to find on Facebook. Uh, if not, I'm going to share it on the Wicked Wildlife Facebook page so you can find hers there. Who knows, maybe Boo will become more famous than all the rest of Wicked Wildlife put together. What do you think, Boo? Huh? Got a lot to say today? So, uh, yeah, I've got a, a fair few things that we're going to share on there. Just some sort of, we thought it might be fun to share, you know, all the photos that we've collected of Boo over the time, starting from when she was a tiny baby, which uh, a lot of you guys might not have seen. You know, she, she came into captivity before she came to us, and we've got a few photos of her when she was not much bigger than Ambassador Vest. Have you ever tried putting a vest on a wombat? It's, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to try it. <laughs> Now back up. Oh, th thanks, Wolfie. Uh, it's a bit bit wobbly here today. I, it was a bit off the cuff. We're actually raking and cleaning up in here and doing some watering, and um, I don't have my tripod, which is why it's a bit shaky. The same as for the main coon cat. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a cat person, but I can imagine they wouldn't be much better to try and get a, a vest on. Sorry, Wolfie, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It doesn't look like it's lagging on mine, but I, I'm in a pretty rough area we're out in a country town our reception is touch and go at the best of times everybody just gets to see your bum boo uh so yeah i'm only gonna make it short but if you guys would like to go pro for boo yeah little wombat strap on vest sort of thing i suppose we can get wombat vision where are we based we're based in western victoria in a town called hamilton so not too far from the south australian border g'day shannon how are you mate um so yeah, if you guys want to know about, you know, Boo and, and Wombats in general, we thought we'll share up all those photos of her when she's little and, and her out and about at shows and things like that. Just a bit of fun. And also a, a bit of a good place to share some Wombat facts. Obviously Wombats, I love all Australian wildlife. I, uh, I fit into a lot of reptile communities, but I wouldn't describe myself as a reptile person. Just anything that's native to Australia, uh, I've got a real passion for. And Wombats is a huge part of that. And rather than our entire Wicked Wildlife Facebook page becoming about wombats, um, what? Is that good? You're a champion for all the work. We try, yeah. Um, but basically it means that, <laughs> it means that rather than the entire Wicked Wildlife page just becoming about wombats, because uh, we've got something like 241 species that are endangered or critically endangered here in Australia, um, means I can share all the wombat facts I like and we'll just pick a couple of the favourites for the Wicked Wildlife page. So if you want to know more about wombats or uh, just stay in touch with our ambassador, Boo Boo, Boo the Wombat on Facebook. What do you reckon, Boo? 
You want to be famous? Huh? We're pretty lucky, aren't we, just to be able to hang out with a wombat every day? She's got her mate, Ollie, who's a, a little wallaby, who also lives in here, but he's a bit shy. He doesn't like coming out and about during the day. He uh, sleeps in her den with her at night time. Or during the day, I should say. What, do you hear something? So, while I'm, I'm here, I suppose, talk about the ultimate selfie. Yeah, it's probably a good one, isn't it? I'll screenshot that. So, um... I suppose while we've got, who never thought you'd have a wombat on your shoulder? So while we've got everybody else, I suppose, uh, how, I hope everybody's had a good Easter. What's everybody been up to? And thanks, Boo Boo. I can't read if people send us messages. And you're very heavy to sit on my arm. What did everybody get up to for the Easter break? How do I bring that back, boo? Here we go. Hanging out with family, that's what it's about. An oversized quokka. Or is a quokka an undersized wombat? Who really knows? Worked. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit that way. We usually work over Easter, but we had it off. Um, hey, boo. You can't ruin the hat. That I Actually, th something I almost did over Easter. I almost bought myself a new hat, but uh, I was with a couple of friends who happen to also watch our videos, and they sort of tried to convince me that I can't get a new hat. They said, everybody knows this one. I don't know. Do you think I need a new hat? Do you not? It's, um, it, it's seen better days. It's, it's a hard-working hat, but uh, maybe it's reaching the end of its life. I'm not sure. What do you think, Boo? You're not helping it live any longer, that's for sure. What camera? This one's just an iPhone. <laughs> um, we actually don't have a camera. All my videos so far have been shot on an iPhone. Uh, we've got a camera on hold with Harvey Norman that we're paying off piece by piece. Donate a new... <laughs> we should. If, if anybody out there is um, employed by a Kubra, tell them that I would love a donated hat. <laughs> this one used to be an Akubra Rough Rider. Um... But yeah, it's not even the shape of a Rough Rider anymore, and there's wombat chew marks on it, and all sorts of things. I know, you're a menace. Uh, but yeah, so I was saying, all, all our videos are shot on an iPhone. Um, we actually got a, new, got a new one this week, so hopefully, I don't know if it's better or worse or no different. But uh, we've bit by bit been paying off for a camera, because a few people have said uh, the audio especially could be better. Um... But unfortunately, cameras are expensive. So <laughs> over the next few months, we'll, we'll start filming with this camera. Uh, and then I've got to figure out how to use it. It's been through hell, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, it's kind of like a well-worn pair of jeans. I don't know whether I should get a better one or whether, um, you know, it's just starting to hit its stride. She's gone all shy. You thinking about what you've done to my hat? That's right. She's lucky we love her. Yeah, it's now broken in. That's exactly it. Jay Donahue, you, you're um, you're not one of our patrons by any chance. I, I don't see the first name, I'm sorry. But I swear that name rings a bell. If you are, thank you very, very much. And if you're not, thanks for watching anyway. Um... But yeah, that, that's where all those, for anybody else who, who is unaware, that's where um, the, the Patreon money over the last couple of months has been going towards is paying off this camera. Um, I've been trying to, a few people suggested that our videos need more sort of B-roll, extra footage. I'm a supporter, thank you very much. A lurk at lurk is all right. We, don't, we can't all be, be loud and obnoxious. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your, for your support, mate. Every single little bit helps. And uh, this camera will hopefully help us do bigger and better videos. Uh, as I was saying, a few people have sort of suggested we need more B-roll rather than just footage of me talking all the time. Uh, and I get that. I wouldn't want to look at my ugly mug. So um, I've been trying to take more sort of extra footage. Uh, and the more I want to sort of do some with, you know, animals in the wild, uh, a camera where I can film something far away and put little bits of that into our videos uh, while I'm talking uh, will be the main goal with that. Oh, 
Thank you very much, Wolfie. You are a legend. Say thank you, Boo. Boo. Come on, the least you could do is turn around. Well, Boo is very thankful as well. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be a week closer to <laughs> the camera, all thanks to Wolfie. Uh, but yeah, so there's a few videos we've got in the pipeline. I'm sorry that I've actually been a bit lax lately. Joyston, oh mate, you, thank you very much. Um, I, I, I'm only mentioning this because, you know, I don't want you guys worrying that the videos aren't getting better. Please don't, don't stress too much. We'll get there slowly, but it's very, very appreciated. Um, but yeah, so I feel a bit bad that we haven't got a few videos out the last few weeks, but uh, there's been a couple of things. The first one is you guys are familiar with all my animals now. There's not too many things we don't have. And um, uh, I, don't, I imagine most of you guys or a lot of you guys are probably familiar with uh, the channel Camp Kennan, who, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Kennan's work. And Kennan puts it really well. There's a, a sort of uh, unfortunate trend with YouTubers who involve animals. Uh, most, I suppose, YouTubers working with animals are probably working with pets. And even though we own these animals, they're not necessarily pets, they're, they're, they're wildlife. But one of the things that some of these people seem to fall into, and I suppose it's easy enough when you're starting to get a few bucks and things from people, uh, is to just buy more animals and more stuff comes in and more stuff comes in. So keep making videos. Um, planning to come down? Yes. Yeah, Kedden was planning to come down to Australia and then he had to build a new pond. Um, hopefully he's still coming at some point in time. It just got put off because yeah, he said a couple of times that when he comes to Australia, he wants to come visit Wicked Wildlife. Uh, but I suppose the best way to make sure it happens is you guys to keep commenting on his videos and remind him it's what you want to see. Because just like me, if, if all his uh, subscribers and supporters tell him he wants something, he's going to probably make the effort to do it. But uh, Kenan puts it really well that, you know, you don't want to fall into this trap of buying animals just so you can produce videos. Uh, and with this in mind, you guys have seen... Correction, Rec Pond, yes. <laughs> rec Pond, that's exactly it. It looks amazing, though. Like, you know, we've got our, our tiny little... Bunnings Pond in the back of Boo's enclosure here. <laughs> we're a lot smaller than, than the Camp Kennan Army. Back. Yeah, we're a lot smaller than Camp Kennan, so we've just got the Bunnings Pond. Uh, but it's somewhere for, for Boo to um, have a drink and stick her feet in and cool down. And uh, we put a few of our baby turtles and things on really warm days out there for an hour at a time just to get some natural UV light. Uh, but yeah, Kennan basically puts it, you don't want to be buying animals like some people do just to make videos. And on the flip side, you guys have seen most of our animals. So we're at a point now we're trying to get in contact with some zoos and wildlife parks uh, and hopefully visit their facilities and show you some animals that I can't necessarily obtain myself um, and talk about those species. We're, we're desperately chasing somebody uh, with some koalas that are friendly enough for me to handle um, to do some videos. Uh, wildlife carers, other facilities, other educators, these sorts of things. Uh, so we've got a lot of videos in the pipeline. We've got a couple of collaborations. A friend of mine who um, has his own channel, Aussie Pythons, or Australian Pythons and Other Reptiles, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, he's doing a video for us on his experiences uh, having been bitten by the world's most venomous snake. So that'll be coming out soon as well. Oh, thank you, Sam. Thank you very, very much. Um, Guys, don't feel obligated. I, I appreciate all of it, but um, you, the three Brian's. I know two Brian's. There's uh, Brian Barshik, obviously. Uh, Brian Cusco, um, and Ken and set up an education network. I would love to work with those guys. Unfortunately, I'm probably small fry compared to them. But there is some amazing channels. Clint's Reptiles. Uh, he does some really cool work, and I love his style. You know, it's very easy um, to sort of start becoming copycat to other people and do what they do just because it seems successful. And Clint has this cool, quirky personality that I really like. So Clint's Reptiles is a great channel if you're uh, into reptiles uh, particularly. Uh, and Snake Discovery. But I do Aussie differently. Yeah, I, well, I do me. <laughs> yeah, I suppose um, I'm not sure if there's too many Australians. Most of these are pet tubers or reptile YouTubers anyway are all American. So uh, I've got my own little angle there. But yeah, Clint's really different as well. So I like Clint. Um, uh, Snake Discovery uh, with Emily, I think it is. She does really good videos and I, I really like how she presents her animals. I'm needed. I, I, we try. And we're getting bigger. Like, you know, um, 
oh, last year on New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve 2017, we had 500 subscribers and we're we're now over 4,000, you know, so we're, we're growing. And thanks to you guys sharing and, and telling your friends and stuff. And the bigger we get, the more we're able to sort of reach out to other bigger channels um, and try and work with them. And I don't blame that, you know, people like Kenan and Brian and these guys, uh, they get a lot of offers uh, and they've got a limited amount of time. So the bigger we get, thank you, Sam and Aiden. Uh, you guys were at Kyabram Fauna Park uh, yesterday, yesterday, today. I, I, I did read your message even if I didn't get around to replying about the cocky. Uh, I was saying that's one of the places I, I'm, I'm friends with the new manager there. So we're hopefully going to be visiting Kai Abram and doing some videos. <laughs> Boo! Talk about preserving and understanding. Yeah, that's just it. You know, I have I think if you're going to... I suppose with captive animals, they're used to being handled. But if you're going to be interacting with any animal, and as much as I love all my reptiles and my reptiles are tolerant to handling... They don't enjoy it. They tolerate it. Uh, they don't have a companionship or a love or something like that. And if I'm going to, you know, handle them and take them away from their warm place for 10, 15 minutes at a time, I feel that we should feel obligated to do something in exchange for that. And in my opinion, uh, the best way we can fulfill that obligation is to use those few minutes of their life away from heat and warmth in their safe place to try and get a message across. It's the least we can do. Yeah, Boo thinks I am a gigantic chew toy. Don't you, Boo Boo? Everybody who sees us on display where Boo is really cool and relaxed sort of says, oh, I would love a pet wombat. Uh, most people haven't seen the bulldozer that Boo turns into who is chewing on me when she's at home in her enclosure where she feels, you know, that she, she rules the roost in here. Uh, and I am nothing more than a rock or another log that's just either in her way or something to jump on. Um, but yeah, the more that you guys share our channel and the quicker we grow, the more we can uh, sort of approach these other facilities and, and YouTube channels and things and um, try and work with them uh, for a couple of reasons, to, to get more people to know about Australian animals because Australian wildlife is not only some of the most endangered wildlife in the world, uh, it's pretty unrepresented, I feel, in the whole YouTube sphere. Uh, just because things like ball pythons uh, and Burmese pythons are so readily available to people overseas, um, I suppose there's less chance for people to, to film and educate about Australian animals. And I think it's really important, particularly that people overseas get passionate about Australian wildlife because if history has shown us anything in Australia, uh, the animals that we're most likely to conserve are gonna be the animals that people uh, from overseas come over and say, look, we want to see this. Uh, crocodile tourism is the perfect example. You know, there is uh, places in the Northern Territory and in Queensland now where uh, 20, 30 years ago, people would have wanted to get rid of crocodiles. But now, partially due to the crocodile farming industry uh, with the ranching side where they're allowed to collect eggs from the wild, and thanks to tourism, people are saying, you know what, we're gonna keep these crocodiles, <laughs> keep these crocodiles here. Um, so yeah, when people overseas start becoming obsessed about Australian wildlife, Australians are more likely to sort of wake up and realise just what we've got and protect it even if it's from a financial perspective. Yeah, that's it. Australia is the land of weed. I was reading somewhere 84% uh, of our mammals are uh, endemic. They're only found here. So there is a lot of Australian wildlife found nowhere else on Earth. And this is part of the reason we have the worst extinction rate. Uh, it's, it's easy when we say that Australia's got the highest mammalian extinction rate on Earth to sort of just as Australians start blaming ourselves and, and people from overseas maybe start going, oh, geez, they mustn't look after their animals. The sad reality is human beings have decimated wildlife wherever they are. Australia's unique in that we've got a couple of problems that make us more susceptible to extinction. We're a big island. Just because we're a huge landmass, people forget that. But being an island, a lot of our animals are only found here. With the mammals and, and a lot of our reptiles, the vast majority are only found here. And it means if we lose them, they're gone. We don't have the luxury of, say, Yellowstone National Park in the United States. You're right. Temper tantrum. Two-year-olds. Uh, we don't have the luxury of, say, Yellowstone National Park in the United States where they eradicated wolves. They got rid of them. And 100 years later, they decided, you know what? We're going to go catch some wolves from somewhere else. We're going to bring them back here. Let them go. And, you know, Yellowstone is an amazing example of rewilding. The whole ecosystem is reverted back to the way it was supposed to be. I know. She's... She's a demanding kid, isn't she? Oh, is that good? Is that good? 
Um, so that's, that's the first thing that places Australia at higher risk of extinctions, uh, is that, you know, we don't have backup populations. The other one is being an island, our animals are, haven't had to evolve to cope with the, the ongoing competition um, that, you know, continents that are attached have. Most animals in Australia, they've never had to constantly adapt. They've lived in their own sort of safe little bubble. And it means that our animals are susceptible to things like diseases. Wombats are the perfect example. Uh, mange, which is a little mite that gets under the skin of, of foxes and dogs and things and causes basically irritation, uh, is fatal to wombats. It, it gets so sore and so painful for them to, to move around that they stop eating. They just sit there in pain and wait to starve to death. It's horrible. Um, so our animals, being on an island, have never evolved uh, to cope with diseases and never evolved to cope with competition and predators that are now in the country. So being an island is a big reason why we have this extinction record. Our animals, yeah, we don't have backup populations and they've never... Yeah, mange can affect a lot of animals. Um, unfortunately, some animals cope with it better. Um, you know, they can carry it for a lot longer um, than something like a, a wombat. Koalas uh, uh, get it from time to time. But... I think the main issue that, that makes wombats particularly susceptible is their habitat choices. They're using burrows, which are often, you know, they dig multiple burrows in a habitat. Burrows that aren't being used at a certain amount of time are, are used by foxes and things. So the, the mites are living there. So wombats also pick it up very readily, I suppose. Um, so it's a, it's a real problem for them. Um, some wildlife carers are doing great work. Can insurance colonies be used to repopulate the wild? Um, so far, there's been mixed success with it. Uh, the Northern Heronose Wombat, a few years ago, had their first... Uh, you may have seen our video on 10 things about wombats you didn't know. We talked about the Northern Heronose Wombat, and now, until recently, they all lived in one national park. And the big worry was they don't have any insurance population. If something happens, they're all gone. And they removed some and released them to another national park, but both within fenced reserves. So, boo. <laughs> both within fenced reserves. Um, there's also been some success with using orphaned animals that have to be released and releasing those into newer areas. Uh, but in both situations, they couldn't just take them to the bush and release them. They had to basically dig artificial burrows that the wombats could use for a little while uh, until they established their own burrows. Uh, a really good thing with particularly wombats is those burrows that suddenly start appearing in the, the landscape become habitat for other animals which is another fact on our 10 things you didn't know about wombats video. Um, so yeah, re rewilding wombats is, is potentially a really good idea, um, but that's about the extent to which it's been done. Yeah, a few few places in New South Wales where, um, you know, they've used new release sites. Training, same with wild quolls and cane toads. Yeah, I think the, the biggest, uh, you know, move or a positive uh, shift with wombats and mange has been carers developing ways to, to treat them in the wild. Unfortunately, catching adult wombats and putting them into care has a very low success rate. They stress, it's very hard to house adult wombats. Um, common or, or forest wombats are pretty territorial, so you take them out, another wombat takes their place. Um, these sorts of things. Um, some wildlife carers have basically started building doggy flaps that go at the front of their wombat burrows with a dose of cydectin, which is a, a product we use to treat parasites on sheep. Uh, and we now know it's safe for wombats. And it means that the wombats are administering the cydectin themselves every time they go in and out of the wombat burrow. So there's some things happening. It's still very labour intensive. So you can imagine it's all voluntary. There's only wildlife carers going out in their own time doing it. And wildlife carers don't have a great deal of time. They're, um, you know, I, I know several wildlife carers who every morning they drive all their local roads checking that everything that's been hit by a car doesn't have any joeys in their pouches, pulling the animals off the side so eagles don't get hit. Then they go home, they feed all these animals that they've rescued um, through the night. You know, some of these these possum joeys and things are on bottles every three, four hours. Um, so then to know that some of them go out in their spare time and look for wombat burrows to put doggy doors in front of is amazing. You know, wildlife carers are the real heroes. And they do it all without any government funding. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, I, I'd like to think we're trying to change people's attitudes. Um, I was speaking to a, a very knowledgeable friend uh, a few weeks ago about, you know, what sort of tertiary qualifications um, people should do or what I have. And I sort of just explained that I, I did the university route for a little while 
and I found out that I enjoyed learning everything, but I'm not a good student. I don't like sitting still for a long period of time. I don't like reading books from cover to cover in one session. I don't like being told you've got to learn this. Um, so I sort of decided my role would be to take what those people learn. Um, even though I, I'm not a zoologist or something myself, I'm fairly scientifically literate. Uh, so basically I've decided my job would be to take what those guys learn and um, turn it into words that the regular person can understand. Because all the science in the world is useless if nobody understands it or cares about it. So that's our place. But uh, anyway, guys, I might wrap things up there. We've been on for 25 minutes and uh, my phone's about to die. I am an, an Aspie, so we both need knowledge and action. So, as oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I, I get that. Like, I, um, I, I have ADHD myself, so I need a certain learning environment to do well. When things work well, I am um, able to soak it up like a sponge. Um, but when I'm told, look, you've got to sit down, you've got to read this book, it's not going to happen. Um, I'll end up drawing pictures of reptile enclosures on the back cover and not even realising I'm doing it. Um, so, you know, we all have our own role. We need scientists, we need people to take what the scientists learn and teach it to regular people, and we need regular people to go out there, take what they've learnt from the person in the middle and uh, apply all these little things, you know, simple things like recycling and uh, planting native plants in your garden and these sorts of things. Yeah, you know, I have pages and pages of diagrams of reptile enclosures. Um... So, you know, we need everybody in the chain to make it work. Uh, as I said in in my video that we sort of made as a trailer for Wicked Wildlife is, you know, one person can make a, a difference, but together we can all make a change. But anyway, guys, I'll, I'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much for listening. If you missed the beginning, the reason we did this video was to tell you guys that Boo has a Facebook page. So uh, either look us up, us up at, at Wicked Wildlife uh, on Facebook, just facebook.com forward slash Wicked Wildlife, or search Boo the Wombat on Facebook and you will get to uh, see even more updates from our famous marsupial. Thanks for listening, as always, guys. Thank you so much for all the help. Um, I promise it will go to a very worthy cause, and I will let you know when we get around to getting this camera. Waves for bye to Boo. Shall be liking Boo's Facebook page. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good one and take care.